Greetings and love to all you fine people out there. Welcome to On the Porch. My name is Scott Bottrell. This is the first in an interview series designed to showcase musicians, their craft, their songs, their stories, their ideas. And with these uncertain times we're living in, give them another platform to maybe make a little money on the side. Uh, we know a lot of musicians and artists that have lost their livelihood during this period. Now, I'd like to introduce the most amazing and the most talented man, Mr. Harrison McInnes. Thank you for being here. How are you doing today, my I'm friend? I'm great, man. It's a beautiful day. This is a beautiful day out here. Um, now, Harrison, um, for those of you that don't, or those that don't know you, will you please uh, give us a little introduction about yourself, who you are, where you came from? I'm Harrison McInnes, and I'm right here from uh, L.A., Lower Alabama, and uh, born and raised here, and uh, went to um, the University of Alabama out of high school, Roll Tide, and then uh, went to Nashville after that to learn how to be a carpenter. And um, He's a fine carpenter, too. <laughs> <laughs> he does. And then um, came, worked my way back down here to the Gulf Coast, and I love it here, and I'm don't want to be anywhere else. Uh, so now I'm in Daphne and Lake Forest. Lake Forest. And uh, that's where I think most of the people in Lower Alabama live in Lake Forest. Yeah, pretty most much. It's a tight-knit uh, community. Of um, 3,000 some homes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, very tight-knit. Yeah, and we all hang out together on the weekends. <laughs> but no, I, and um, I've got um, a boy and a girl on the way. My beautiful wife, Bailey, is pregnant with a infant little baby girl named dandy oh i'm so excited about this too i oh, know you're a little too excited to i'm so honest. excited <laughs> i've been calling myself unky scott yeah <laughs> so uh she's on her way she'll be here in june and um until then we're just we're kind of hunkering down doing this thank you for this this is wonderful thank you julie for this this is this is what it's all about is uh and it, it, i've seen a lot of this on facebook you know a lot of people I'm um, doing little private concerts and, you know, it's like, it's a great thing because it's really bringing people together and it's showcasing a lot of people that don't really get to do this, you know? Yeah, and it gets it gives uh, a lot of fans out there a chance to see a lot of music that they don't normally get to see. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know how it is as musicians. You go That's to a great. gig and you could have 50 people, you could have four people. Yeah. But this is a venue where anybody could watch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this pandemic has been fantastic for the music business. <laughs> for, the, for the music business. There's going to be an evolution of music that's, that I'm really excited about, songs and stories that are going to come out of this, mm -hmm. you know, the silver lining in, in this, this dark time. Um, what have you been doing to prepare for the coronavirus personally? Nothing. I've been reading a lot uh, online about, you know, how it's really not that big of a deal. I don't, you know, I'm not sure if I should say that or not, but it's really not that big of a deal. Let's, let's <laughs> just wash your hands. If you're nervous, put a mask on, wash your hands, and let's all, it's going to be fine. We're going to get through this. It's not that big of a deal. It really isn't. But, you know, it's good that we're doing what we're doing, and a lot of good things are going to come out of it, but I just don't want fear, you know? I don't exactly. want fear to spread. And We don't need to fear, and, that, and that's the beautiful thing about what we're trying here is give musicians another platform to allow you all out there to maybe laugh and love and cry and dance i mean we we all still got to live with hope and and it's the only thing that's going to keep us moving forward strong as a as a community true now um harrison's going to play us several songs uh um we're going to we're going to do interviewing song in between each one and then we have some featured por porch players going to come up and we're going to do a epic porch jam at the end so y'all stay epic. tuned but Right now, Harrison's going to play a song that I was really excited to hear, and I just heard it during sound check, and it was everything I thought it was going to be. It was going to blow me away. And this one's about this little baby girl that's on the way. And uh, you tell us a little bit about the song. Yeah, uh, Dandy uh, is her name. And it's from my um, Aunt Dandy. Uh, her name is Daring Ann Darrington, but everybody called her um, Dandy, and... Um, She's a fantastic woman, and um, her full name will be Isabel Darrington McInnes, and um, that's a powerful name. Well, <laughs> and Collins was like, "Well, you can't name her, you know, Isabel Darrington McInnes and call her Dandy." He's like, "Trust me," because his <laughs> name is Harrison Collins McInnes, and we call him Collins. He's uh -huh. like, "It's a pain in the butt, Dad. It really is. If you're gonna call her Dandy, then put Darrington up front." 
you know. But um, anyway, this is what uh, it, I really don't. I'm not like an Eric Erdman or a Ross Newell. I'm not like a, a machine where I can wake up in the morning and like start writing. You know, like these guys are amazing and they're they can wake up and at seven o'clock in the morning and be like, you know, get their pen and paper and their guitar out and they start writing songs. Like my songs come like a year at a time and it's it's really just when something hits me, you know? Yeah. Nothing hits you harder like <laughs> about to have a baby girl. So yes. uh, so it hit me, man. It hit me hard. And um, this is uh, uh, basically my song, me and Bailey's song to her and Colin's too. He's in there too. And um, that's it. It's it, what you call it, Dandelion, because I thought that was cool. And um, yes. it came from Dandelion in a bed of clover. I just <laughs> imagine like a, a bed of four leaf clovers and one little dandelion poked out of the middle of it, you know? And, nice. It's a beautiful um, visual. So, uh, yeah, so we ready? Well, without further ado, everyone, Mr. Harrison McKinnis, Dandelion. Wow. 
<laughs> wow. Hey, y'all can clap out there if you want to. Put your hands together. <laughs> we have a little small audience out here. Very small. Very small. <laughs> We're and they're within all the directives of the CDC. We're, yeah, they're we're, all, well with, we're, we're all well within the Chris, confines. Chris, can you get a shot of all this out here? <laughs> <laughs> they're all spaced. Look how perfectly they're spaced. <laughs> we're following guidelines, people. Yes. And you all should, too. That's right. <laughs> Y'all could really actually separate just a yeah, little you, bit. Yeah, you two are way too close. <laughs> They've been making out. Anyway, it's fine. Wow, Harrison, <laughs> that song, that was amazing, man. That <clears> thank was you, beautiful. Sir beautiful um oh a shout out to kathy Steele. i was about ready to ask you about that i know that that's a special we tell us quickly about yes um luther womble uh rest in peace my my friend luther womble um i really didn't know him other than worshiping him you know like seeing him live and we played on stage one time and uh he uh he, he was he's a force you know and um a superb guitar player, but he was always loud. He was always like, "Uh, he was the force on stage." So if you shared the stage with him, you know, you kind of had to pay homage to him. You know, you kind of had to step back a little bit. And um, I was at the um, Blues Tavern, and I uh, got to be on stage with him. And I obviously was not paying enough hum homage to <laughs> Luther because <laughs> he walked over and was like, and oh. turned my <laughs> turn my anyway. Luther Womble, uh, this is his uh, uh, guitar, and uh, he used to play at the, the um, Frog Pond a lot, and um, and uh, Kathy was kind of his, like, you know, she would, um, you know, take care of him. It, it was in the later years, and uh, and she called him one day. I was like, look, Luther, I've got your check, and uh, I've got your guitar, you know. You left it here. He's like, I'll take the check, but you can have the guitar. And wow. um, so, uh, so she kept it, and she's had it this whole time. Um, and, uh, this last Christmas, she kept messaging me like, Harrison, what kind of guitars do you have? You know, and like this is kind of weird from Kathy. I was like, you know, I've got this and this, I told her. And she was like, well, you know, what kind of, um, have you ever played slide? And I was like, yeah, I'm trying to work on it, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, so then the uh, last time we were out there at Kathy's farm, she was like, I've got something for you. And she came out and was like, Wow. Played this guitar and I was like, oh, sweet. I played it. She's like, no, like, play it forever. This is yours from me and Luther. I was like, that is amazing. So I named it Kathy. And um, so this is a shout out to Kathy Steele. Kathy Steele. Uh, and Kathy Steele runs the most prominent venue around here called the Frog Pond. And if y'all haven't been, please, please make a chance to go. Once this is all blown over, it is it is peace and love and light. Yeah, an Earl. She's had to an Earl. She's had to um, cancel. She's, she's had, to, had cancel. to cancel just like everybody else, and it's and just like all the other musicians around here. Kathy relies on on that venue to help help her move along too. So, um, speaking of that, is something I want to bring up uh, quickly is everything you do here, you can please find Harrison McKinnis on PayPal and Venmo and send him some tips. Because that's a big thing of what we're doing here is giving artists a chance so they can make a few dollars. And um, PayPal, Venmo, Harrison McKinnis. Um, now, later on, we'll have the Porsche players here. And um, if you'd like to leave a tip for the Porsche players, find me, Scott Bottrell, on PayPal, and that money will go to the Porsche players. Um, and that is along with all the musicians out there that are live streaming. Don't be afraid to throw them a dollar or five dollars because they all could use it right now, especially Harrison. He's got this little baby coming, so mm -hmm. he can use all the money that you can send. So <laughs> send it on out. Um, now, uh, quickly, uh, what what are some of your biggest music influences? Where does your music come from? Where does that well come from? Uh, my big brother. Norman uh, is four years older than me, and uh, we, um, he, this is back in cassettes era. Oh, yeah. I, I know you know days. all about that. And uh, he, um, Made he a lot really, of mixed tapes. he pushed me, um, pushed a lot of fantastic music on, we shared a room, you know, when we were little, so uh, his music was my music, and I listened to whatever he told me to listen to, basically, you know, we had like a boom box, and you know. He had lots of cassettes and um, and it was Zeppelin, 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 and um, Almond Brothers and Grateful Dead. Basically, those three, Led Zeppelin, 
Almond Brothers and the Grateful Dead, I can pull anything, anything that I do, I can be like, oh, that's where you get it. And I can, so a direct link to one of those members of one of those three bands, you know. And then I got into, of course, you know, um, Pink Floyd and, you know, uh, uh, once I first picked up a guitar and started to learn, you know, to play, um, it was more of the singer songwriter stuff. It was more like Neil Young and James Taylor and, um, stuff like that. And that's where, that's where I like kind of cut my chops on songwriting and, uh, cause it, you know, not to say that that's simple stuff, but, um, you know, you can't just pick up a guitar and play, you know, bird song or something, you know, like it, um, Neil Young and, and, uh, and, um, those kind of singer songwriters, it's more about the words. It's not, a, you know, this the, sometimes the, it can just be GDC, and you can do a million things with it. You know, as as a songwriter, that can be frustrating when you're ri- trying to write a song, and some of these songs are three chords long, and they create this brilliant piece of art. And exactly. It's like, how can I reproduce that at home with three chords? Yeah, <laughs> but that's what it's all. It's, it's also inspiring that you know, look, you know, Neil Young literally used one chord in the song. You know, exactly. Neil Young was just in D the whole time, and it. And it <laughs> It's all about, you know, um, then it's all about the lyrics and it's all about the description. It's all about putting the listener into a space that um, that they can relate to. And it doesn't take a lot of crazy jazz chords to do that, you know. And so that's once I started playing guitar, then I, you know, um, went into that, you know, GDC and, you know, all these one, four, five things that I'm, that I'm still at basically these these days is, is simplicity, you know, and 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 I'm, my chords aren't difficult and my um, lyrics aren't you know crazy all out there. It's really just about um, making um, the listener uh, or putting them in a space where they're out of their space at the moment, you know. And what how how you do that I don't know, but I, I do it. It just hits me like I don't. Like I said, I don't get up in the morning and write. Like it's, it'll just hit me, and this feeling will hit me. And sometimes it's like words, and I'll write them down, you know. But it's something that like it hits me hard, and so like I'm compelled to write down those words, or so a melody will hit me, or just a feeling. Sometimes it's a just a feeling of sadness, or a feeling of love, or a feeling of something. And then I pick up the guitar and like try to match. You know, literally just mess around with whatever I can find, you know, to match that feeling. And then it's like it goes. And it locks in, and then it's like, and then it just it flows out, uh, uh, done for like a year. <laughs> as your songwriting, do you develop? Does your lyrics come first? Does your melody come first, or a combination? It really, um, d- it's really just a feeling. It starts with a feeling, and and um, I'm not a poet by any means, you know. I'm not. I'm. I mean, I think some people would beg to differ. I'm not that. though. It's you he, know. He's, I, you say that you have simple stuff, but uh, if if y'all haven't listened to Harrison McInnes's album, it's right here. You can find it on Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud. You can message Harrison McInnes or Bailey McInnes on Facebook, and you can order your own physical copy along with T-shirts and stickers. Um, but please listen to this album. I'm. It really blew my mind the first time that I heard it. I, I couldn't believe the production. And it's Lee Yankee, uh, Lee Yankee, and uh, Andy Cloninger. Andy really, I mean, like, that's what I'm saying. I'm not a poet. I'm not. I don't see myself as. But that is really. You can take just a feeling, and you know what I do is I take a feeling and I put music to it. But people like Lee Yankee and Andy, they they took what they took my feeling and the music, and then it's you know, it's the whole songwriting process is a it's never ending. You know, you can add you know yeah. to what add whatever you can to this um, feeling. And, uh, and you know, sometimes the more people, the better. Like people like Eric, you know, he'll write songs with three other people, you know, and we're supposed to write this weekend, me and Eric. And, nice. And which I don't do often. I really don't. Like I said, I'm not a, I'm a songwriting machine, you know. It's not a math problem for me. It's more of just a, it hits me and it, and I do what I can to express what's in my head. But, um, you know, now speaking of that song, um, I think that's a perfect lead in uh, um, for you to tell us about this next song you're going to sing, and how much um, I know that it impacted you in your life. Um, 
It's called Colorado Kisses. Yes. Yes. Uh, it's basically about um, when we got married out in Colorado, and um, it was beautiful, and it was um, just the two of us, and we went out there, and uh, and um, we had wonderful people out there, um, including Mr. Robbie Eminette. A moment. Now, now, uh, this is the the frog pond. You went out there for Kathy Steele's frog pond that she has in Colorado mm-hmm. in the summer. And um, not only did you go out to play, but you took your beautiful bride with you mm-hmm. and married her out there. Yes. Um, and and then the song has evolved from from that feeling. Yeah, and we um, we really didn't have a plan on when we were getting married. Like we. A lot of it was up to Chad Edwards. Like he was, he went out the day before, and like uh, we showed him where we were gonna go to do it. There's like an, already an altar out there, and um, <clears throat> so Chad went out there and like waited to see when the best lighting was and nice. everything. And um, so, um, and so if we you got, don't don't know Chad Edwards, you need to check him out. He's all yes. over online. Amazing, amazing photographer. He, he's amazing, and um, so. Uh, we um got married. It was amazing, and um but we were staying at State Bridge, which is right up the road from uh, Rancho Del Rio, and um Bailey and I and Robbie, I, I was, uh, some of me wants to think that me and Robbie were in a tent at one point together, two of us, <laughs> and um he had some ideas, and we kind of like worked back and forth, and we started like this whole Colorado Kisses thing, this whole you know uh, describing what we, we were doing, we. We um, took duckies down the river, you know, and uh, um, down the Colorado River, and just like the the trying to capture the feeling of where we were at, you know, and uh, and that's basically how I write is based on feelings and based on, you know, not necessarily locations, but feelings about those locations will give me a huge like punch in the gut, and I have to like get it out, you know, I have to match it with some type of chord, and I was like. <laughs> So, and sometimes, a lot of times, I'll, I, I won't find the right, I won't find the right chord, so I'll tune it to, tune the knobs to fix it, you know, to fit the chord that I'm trying to play, and uh, it ended up being in a uh, double drop D. It was just like a really droning kind of thing, and it, and it, and uh, it felt like it was real, like bouncing off the mountains kind of. And I try to do a. Um, you know, a lot of hammer-ons where it's like, bam, bam, you know. Yeah, so, um, because this is, this is not only a, a song like all musicians write. This is, this is a memory. This is nostalgia. This is, mm-hmm. this is something that you can play and listen to forever and take you back to yes. that, that moment in time. That's the point. That's the, the final verses. I'm floating with you there while I lay here alone. I brought some Colorado kisses right here at home. So it's like the whole, that last verse ties it all in together, you know. Um, all of it, it, it's basically like a line to line. It's, this is, you know, it's, it starts, even though we were there when we wrote it, it starts from the point of view of being at home, you know, and, and, and feeling the feeling that we had, whether it was last year or it was 20 years from now, you know, this is what heaven feels like right here at home. You know? That's beautiful. I'm excited to be put into that time right now. Yes, so without yeah. further ado, Mr. Harrison McKinnis, Colorado Kisses. heaven feels like you and me at home a thousand miles from Colorado we did that on our own I've got you you've got me only the stars can explain everything is different but nothing nothing has changed nothing has changed
We sit down west just the other day. Nothing but love to lead the way. You were right by my side as the mountains pass. Mile after mile, this love. Just around the bend We can get off there But I don't want this to end I'm floating with you there As I lay you alone I Brought some Colorado kisses oh, Right here at home Thank you. Thank you, Robbie. You know, I, we were talking about nostalgia memory, and I can only imagine going back to Rancho Del Rio, like I'm sure you will, and we playing did. We that went back song. and took Collins with us. Oh, oh man. man. To play that song, I can only imagine the, the swell of emotion that I'm sure you were under at the time. Yeah. Every time I play it, man, it really just takes me back there. I can hear, and I, with the, a little thing like adding delay pedal. That's kind of a, like a audio just because this adds like it's like bouncing off the mountains kind of thing. And yeah. if I do it just right, I can literally be sitting right there. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. Um, so uh, um, hopefully you'll be able to go back this year. I don't know if it's going to end up happening with everything Not this going year. On, we got a baby but, on uh, the way. Uh, but next uh, next year, yes. it should, everything should be back to normal and yes. be able to play again. Um, and uh, Kathy puts on an amazing production out there. And uh, um, if you all get a chance, definitely go to Colorado and see Harrison McKinnis play that song in the mountains mm -hmm. and let it bounce and reverb. Off. <laughs> Where it was meant to be. Where bouncing. it's meant to be. Um, so uh, let's uh, real quickly talk about uh, Band-Aid next Sunday. And some Sunday, maybe. Okay. It might this be last Sunday. <laughs> maybe it is last Sunday. 
Where are we? All right, let's do In the timeline of things. <laughs> <laughs> no, just don't mention Band Aid. It's fun. I don't know anything about it anyway. I can't tell you anything about it anyway. I'd have no gigs. Let's just talk about the songs. All right. Don't even worry about the gigs and the merch. Gigs, and merch, songs, and merch is all we got. Okay, again, let's uh, let me help Harrison peddle his wares a little <laughs> bit. You can find him on PayPal and Venmo. Please send this man some tips. Um, that way, it can go towards his little baby coming and his merch. Please contact him online, uh, Facebook at Harrison McKinnis and Bailey McKinnis. You can purchase your own copy of Love Remedy, and you can buy a T-shirt, stickers. And you can uh, help this man move forward in his craft. Um, so let's talk about the next song that you want to present to us. Um, what song are you going to do? Saint Peter. Oh, we're going to do Saint Peter. That's your okay. request. That was my. Yeah. That was my request. <laughs> that was. That's my favorite song. Oh, gets me every time. I'm super excited about this one. So. Give us the story behind St. Peter. It's also Bailey's favorite song, too. Is it Bailey's yes. favorite song? And it's not my band's favorite song. And I would, would love to have the guys join on this one, but it's just, it's different every time. Like, it's the, it's not a very complex song, but it has it goes to things. Sometimes I do it different every time, basically. So I didn't want to screw everybody up. But um, it was the first, most like Colorado Kisses, Dan, uh, Dandelion, Love Remedy, all like 99% of my songs are straightforward, first person, this is how I feel. Let me tell you about my brain and my thoughts and my feelings, you know. This is the first time I ever did um, a song that was like third person, you know. It was like a story song, which I'm really still not very good at, but um, it's uh, it was the only time I was able to like write a story in my head and that had nothing to do with me, you know, mm. and um, and try to, you know, make a story, basically. And um, uh, so the story is, it's basically this dude who's like, in my head, I imagine this, like, I don't know why, but I imagine, like, this old biker dude, and he's, like, tattooed and, you know, uh, wearing a vest and super, <laughs> super bad guy. And uh, and Come he falls now, in. Not all vest-wearing guys are bad guys. <laughs> But uh, he was like a bad dude, you know, and um, he uh, was, you know, just raised wrong and was thieving and and robbing and just he didn't give a shit about anything, you know. And uh, he met this sweet little Christian girl, and um, and she he fell in love with her, and she fell in love with him, and um, they, you know, fell in love and and had like this very short love story. And then I don't know what the accident was, but somehow she dies, and um, so he knew that she was very religious and Christian, and she believed in heaven and hell. And uh, he knew if anybody in the world was going, if there was a heaven, and if anybody was going, she was going. And so he, not knowing anything about what to do, he figured he'd bribe his way into heaven. He'd you know steal a bunch of stuff, and when he died, he'd he'd be buried with gold and diamonds and when he got to St. Peter he'd bribe St. Peter to get into heaven so he could see his girl. That's a beautiful concept. <laughs> uh, I might have to use that concept. <laughs> Make sure Hadn't I get me. in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so without further ado again, Mr. Harrison McKinnis, with Saint much Peter. ado. With much ado. diamonds chasing them with gold I ain't got nothing now for you honey but I'm gonna be a rich man when I go oh I'm gonna be a rich man when I go 
And I'm gonna bribe old St. Peter when I reach them gates of gold. I'm gonna say, Hey, St. Peter, would you like a, a do gold chain? Uh, got one right here for you, honey. Got diamonds on your name. Whoa, whoa. St. Peter, won't you let me in? Say, in my end, I can see my baby. See my baby again. I got it all figured out now, darling. Nothing left but time. I'm gonna sit in your rocking chair. I'm gonna drink my wine and I'm gonna bribe old St. Peter so you can be mine. You can be mine. I'm gonna say, uh, hey, St. Peter, would you like a, a new gold chain? Uh, I got one right here for you, brother. I got diamonds in your name. Oh, 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 oh. St. Peter, won't you let me in? See in my end, I can see my baby. See my baby again. Of my memories, both new and old, and with a heart full of happiness and a belly full of gold, I'm gonna bribe oh St. Peter, so you can be mine. You can be mine. See my baby, see my baby again. And I'm gonna say, hey, see Peter, would you like a, a new gold chain? I got one right here, but your brother got diamonds in your name. Oh, oh. Let me in, so in my end, I can see my Bailey, see my Bailey again. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Saint Peter, give me a favor. Oh, I love that concept. I, I, I so love that concept, and I, I definitely feel sometimes and things and mistakes I've done in my life that I might need to bribe St. Peter myself one day. <laughs> um, so how did, it, going back to songwriting, how did that song evolve for you over time? Was that an instant, this song formed, or did you have to, since you didn't have that emotion and feeling, you're writing about exactly. something else, did you have to evolve that song over time? It, a lot of my songs do evolve, mostly really not. Like, it's just a feeling that sticks with me. So, like, it, I might make the song fit that feeling better 
you know, by changing, like, instead of just doing the, uh... I, after playing it for years, I realized doing a seven there, throwing a seven in there made it just kind of, the minor kind of threw yeah, it, made it, yeah. made it, you know, little, little things like that evolve over the years. So but. minor tweaks, but nothing, nothing major. Did you ever take any of your songs and completely rewrite and, and change them to a heavy degree? I can't, I really, that's just, I did, that's not how I write, you know, I just, it's like something that just, it's almost like a taste in your, like in your mouth. Like it's something that like, I'm trying to fit this and lyrics and melody to this taste in my brain, you know, like, so whenever it comes out, everything's kind of in line with the taste of mustard or whatever, you know, like whatever that feeling is, it all goes straight in that direction. So a lot, it takes me a while to get to where I can explain what I'm trying to do to explain mustard to you. But once I do, like it all falls in line. So once it's completed, there's very you, little you taste tweaking. the mustard after that. Yeah, yeah. there's little, very little. <laughs> you feel tweaking. the memory, the the moment in time that mm -hmm. you wrote about. Um, so next up, we're gonna get up the Porsche players, but uh, uh, real quick before before we evolve this into an epic Porsche jam, mm -hmm. again, let's go over a few things. PayPal, Venmo, please send Harrison some money. Get online and buy some of his merch. Get a hard copy of this amazing mm -hmm. CD. And uh, get yourself a, a T-shirt. If you I'm buy still waiting on mine. five CDs, you get a free sticker. So that is an amazing deal. So that Bailey's is an amazing like... deal. <laughs> <laughs> Bailey's my uh, merch manager, yeah. and uh, you're she's... cutting into her overhead. Yeah, man. <laughs> she's got plans for those stickers. Come on now. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So. Um, and before we move on and before this devolves into our epic Porsche jam, um, let me mention a few things. Um, first and foremost, we're, this whole production is presented by Foxy Records, uh, Sergio Rainbow. And Bud Platinum. <laughs> Bud no, Platinum. Oh, no. Uh, send Not us yet. your cases, Bud. <laughs> um, Sergio and I came up with this concept a few months ago, and in light of everything that's happened, it, it, it definitely evolved over this last week. Uh, of what we want to accomplish with this. And, and I said it earlier in the day, but uh, the, the feeling that I would love to leave all of you with is the feeling of hope. Um, create, write, paint. I know you're stuck in the house, but um, take this time to make something beautiful for yourself, for your family, for, and it doesn't have to be a piece of art or music. I mean, you can create a home, you can create memories with your children, um, but just use this time to, to move forward with hope and know that we're, we're maybe sequestered for a little while, but we will come out of this. And quick PSA, wash your damn hands, <laughs> okay? Use some hand sanitizer. Be smart about things. Let's stop with the hugging and the touching and, and all that stuff. That social distance, because it's not about you. It may be a, 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 a low-grade flu to some people, but when you pass it to somebody with an immune problem or an older person, that's a death sentence. So remember that when you're saying that it's not a big deal, because to some people, it is a very big deal. Um, again, thank you so much, Harrison, for coming and spending the day. I love you, this man. This is awesome. Thank Harry you, Harrison, Julie. Thank yes, you, DP. Julie and David Pittman for letting us um, take over your porch. And again, let me let me praise Foxy Records for presenting this. Dr. Robert. And then also, um, we got several different um, productions on this. We got Q Productions, Blue Shark Studios, all this productions and Foxy Records. Robert running our sound. Mr. Chris. Chris running our camera work. Hey, man. Um, it, this was a, a, a group effort coming into all this. And I can't tell you how much I love and appreciate all of you for, for allowing us to, to bring a platform to people that could really use it right now. So everybody support as much as you can. Throw some dollars at all the people that you love and know that they spend all their life trying to create something beautiful for you when you go out. And this time they could really use your help. So um, we're going to take a short break and set up with the porch players, and um, 
we're going to have some little fun. So, you know, stick around. Good job, Dr. Rabbit. Sweet six pound, eight ounce. No, I'm, I'm genius. Teenage Genius, the one that... <laughs> oh, yeah. Teenage Genius, riding your skateboard and everything's cool. Teenage Genius Jesus. That's the name of my new album. Those lost Jesus years were his Teenage Jesus Genius. All right, y'all, we're back. Uh, thanks for uh, sticking around. Uh, again, Harrison McKinnis, thank you for coming. Um, I want to feature the Porsche players we got today. Uh, Mr. Ross Graham on bass. Mr. Mason Farrell on lead guitars. Um... Two of my most favorite human beings right there. So, uh, again, we're going to uh, evolve this into Porsche Jam. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. This is, uh, got to have you.
and you go up trying to do one lean. Tell me what you want to do. Thank <laughs> you.